Welcome to Module 4 of the PLP training course. The objective of this module is to give you an overview of just Section 3 of the PLP. Section 3 focuses on the learner reflection. This section is more involved and more complex by design. We want to encourage students to become more reflective and empowered. So the subcategories in these sections are means by which they can begin to do that. Um, depending on the developmental age and maturity of your students, you will want to consider some activities that help prepare students to think reflectively, honestly, and realistically. Um, this section of the PLP is probably um, the heaviest lift. So we wanted to commit um, a module just to this section so that we could ensure that there was clarity around it. Um, so let's kind of walk through it. I'm logged in as a student. Um, and you'll see section three is about learner reflection. Section 3.1, 3.2, fairly straightforward. The kids have seen questions like this in the previous section. So this is, you know, pretty simple. Um, kids just indicate what they think their strengths are, what they feel successful at, and then some things that they struggle with, some of their needs. Um, when we get down here to section 3.3 and 3.4, um, you can see the question is formatted in um, kind of a, a sentence starter or a sentence stem to prompt the students. So, for example, what distracts me from doing my best learning? Kids might write things like, you know, talking in the classroom, loud noises, people playing with their pencils, you know, things like that. Um, over here, section 3.3, when I'm stuck, what do I need? Do I need... Um, the teacher to show it to me again? Do I need a buddy to explain it to me? Do I just need a little bit of extra time to process and think? Here's an opportunity for kids to tell you what they need and what gets in the way of their learning. These are some pretty powerful questions that could really drive some classroom instruction decision making in regards to UDL. So these are some pretty powerful questions. When we get down here to section 3.5, 3.5 will only show up for students 7th through 12th grade. So if you're an elementary teacher or a Creek View teacher, you'll notice the student's PLP goes from section 3.4 to 3.6. This section of the PLP will not be present. Um, but what we're asking our older learners to do, our middle school and high school kids, is to reflect on their um, habits of mind. You know, what are they doing well in? Have they really worked hard at collaboration and resilience? Um, and what are they doing to improve in that? We really want kids to start to be mindful about their attitudes and habitudes towards learning. And so this is an opportunity for students to reflect on that. Okay, now we get down here to the heavy lifting. Section 3.5 talks about academic goals. Now, if you're an elementary teacher, there will only be one um, you know, area right here for the students to create one academic goal and then one non-academic goal. This PLP that I'm signed into right now, this is a high school student's PLP. You'll notice that there's an area for one academic goal, but then also a second academic goal. And the same thing down below, one non-academic goal and then a second non-academic goal. Now, a couple people have been asking me, do my kids have to set two academic goals? Do they have to set two non-academic goals? The answer is no. We're asking that they set at least one, but we wanted to put two goal options there in case the learner felt like they wanted another goal. So it's not required, it's optional. It gives kids the latitude for more goal setting should they like to do that. Okay, so let's kind of talk through this. It says skill to improve. You may want to guide your kiddos to be specific in their skill selection and encourage them to measure more specifically than just an overall grade. You know, we would we want kids to be thinking bigger than, I want to get an A in Algebra 2. You know, can they be more specific about the goals that they're reaching for, not just solely focused on grades? Um, and then over here are some action steps. So whatever the goal is indicated here, 
the learner is going to indicate the action steps over here. You may also need to consider some guidance around um, how they're going to measure progress and their steps toward improvement. For example, um, how is a student intentionally going to make progress towards a specific goal? How might they track that progress? How might they check their progress? How often are they going to check their progress? Kids are probably going to need some guidance around that. So you, the teacher, are going to have to support that process. You know, just a couple things to think about. You know, and then down below, you've got this target date. Um, again, you're going to need to guide your students to select a calendar date that promotes, you know, viability. Um, do they need all year to meet a goal? Do they just need a month? You know, can the goal be next week? Make sure the target makes sense for the goal. Um, and then over here, you know, you can see from the entry box, you're going to have to create a plan for students to revisit their goals and their action steps periodically. If a student has met their goal, you're going to click yes right here. Okay. And then down below, you're going to insert the date. Did they meet their goal on October 5th? You know, did they meet their goal on December 8th? When did they meet their goal? Okay. When the student meets their goal, this will trigger a new blank goal box to appear. So every time a yes is checkmarked, a new empty blank goal box will appear. And the way that we built the form, the PLP form, they can have up to six blank goal boxes in a year. So it will continue to generate new goal boxes as kids meet their goal. Now, if a student hits not yet, the goal will continue on as is. Students can make modifications or adjustments or adaptations to their action plan or completion dates at that time if they'd like to. Um, so that's how it works for the academic goal. Again, you've got one opportunity for one academic goal. You've got a second opportunity for another academic goal, should you choose to. Down below, it says non-academic goal. Okay? It's formatted exactly the same way as above, with the skills to improve, the action steps, the target dates, the goals met. Okay? But again, you might have to guide your students on what those non-academic goals might be. You know, for a first grader, it might be, you know, I want to learn to tie my shoes. Or, you know, for a fourth grader, it might be to know all their multiplication facts. Oh, that's actually an academic goal. Sorry. You know, a fourth grader, it might be, um, you know, something related to soccer. Or who knows? Maybe it's something related to habits of mind. Um, but we recognize that there's value in setting goals that are not just academic. Uh, so there's an opportunity to do that down below, down here. Um, again, this is a really kind of substantial part of the PLP. It requires um, quite a bit from the learner and probably a fair amount from you, the teacher, as well, in regard to supporting students. If you need help with this section of the PLP, or if this is unclear, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask. Um, Ashley and I are happy to help you. Instructional coaches can support you in that endeavor as well, um, but please don't hesitate to ask should you need something.